Hi guys and welcome to spring 2018. Today is March 9 and this is the Texas Fly Fishing Report. It's been a while I know, you know, we take uh, time off in the winter because there's no point where I live in, in fly fishing in the, the dead of winter up here where ponds get frozen over and, and it's uh, basically sedentary to hibernating fish. Uh, there's so much to go over today and so much going on. We got a huge blustery day going, so the weather is very clear. It's very, very mild, but the wind is a problem. Um, what I want to tell you about today is an opportunity that comes up usually only in the spring, and that is hybrid sand bass and all kinds of fish that you'll find when you are fly fishing below some of the dams in North Texas. I try to run a scroll at the very end that talks about the rest of the state. It's from Texas Parks and Wildlife and on that scroll you'll be able to read about other locations, lakes, and interpret what's going on in salt water and things like that. So make sure you stay for the scroll or fast forward to the scroll at the very end and gather your information there. Um, what we're starting this year, this is a brand new year for Texas Flycaster and the Texas Fly Fishing Report is we're starting a new service for subscribers. I've had subscribers for many years on my uh, texasflycaster.com website. That's www.texasflycaster.com. Um, that subscribe to the written words that I had. I had a, a, a set up there where people could only access it if they had this um, paid subscription to certain stories and things like that. Well, that went away. All the reading on Texas Flycaster is free, but this year marks the launch of a new subscriber-based YouTube sub-channel. And the sub-channel basically is supplemental. Uh, typically, it'll be done on the same day as these videos come out, and it's only by invitation that you get to watch these. So it's a $30 a year membership. You can probably expect anywhere from $30 to $50 videos, supplemental videos, besides the ones you see on the regular YouTube channel uh, by paying that subscription rate. And you'll see that scroll across the bottom and tell you how to contact me, my email address, and we can set that up for you. But it's uh, exclusive, more, more distinct details and information just to kind of fill in some of the blanks that are not intentionally left here, but there's just not enough time here. And there's uh, people that are very, very serious about fly fishing and those are the guys who should, should subscribe to the new sub-channel of Texas Flycaster on YouTube. So, now I got all that information out of the way and wasted all that time, let me tell you about what's going on. We've got these dams that are above Conservation Pool here in North Texas and they are releasing water. Well, they can only release a certain amount of water based on uh, what the if they're connected by a river or whatever, the, the lake below them. So the lake below them may have more water than the lake above, so they have to kind of regulate their flow. And that can mean action or no action. It's all about the amount of water coming out of the dam. So you've got to go check the flow rates at the dams. And you're wanting spikes and you're wanting to see that they're, they're, the flows are way above normal for any of this to be valid for you or where you want to go. And there are places that um, I will talk about on the, uh, the uh, subscriber video that don't have a river connecting them um, here in North Texas that still have overflows that go over the spillway and those can be very interesting too. So. Let me, I've got to go to the computer because there's so much to talk about. Let me see where I left off. Um, this phenomenon with the uh, fish below the dam, you're going to want, it's, it's rare, so you want to do it when you can because it only happens in, in years where we get enough rain and we hadn't had much rain all the way up until December and finally it started to rain in January, February and the, the water, we're out of, we're out of uh, drought situation here in, in north, te north central Texas. It's pushed the drought map back so we're not in drought anymore and uh, the ground is soaked and so all that water is just flowing now into the lakes and they're having to release water because there's nowhere else for it to go. There's too much. 
Uh, I can see a situation where if we got into some serious rains in the spring where we would actually go way high like we did a couple of years ago, three years ago, and uh, it was kind of crazy at the lakes where uh, parks were shut down and the ramps were shut down and things like that. that that's that's awesome time on the lake proper but right now with the release um, and the water temperatures and the time of year moon phase and all these things what you're gonna find is sand bass and hybrids running up these these rivers or up these channels to try to get to the, the end of the line where they can spawn well that's what's happened as you'll see you know interspersed with with this uh, report is video from the dam that I was at uh, yesterday, Lake Ray Roberts Dam, and uh, there was plenty of action including a, a fairly sizable largemouth bass that just happened to be in the wrong place at the right time. So uh, that's as big as any bass I've caught on fly as far as I remember. Um, and it was really fun. It was like catching a lead weight though compared to these other fish that fight really kind of differently and a lot, lot more hard all this said you, when you go to do these kind of things what i carry is an eight weight tfo this is the uh <coughs> mangrove i like a reel it's got a good drag because you're going to want to get to your get to your reel and let the drag work you got to remember that when you're fishing in current like this these fish know how to use the current and that means that they will use the current and a smaller fish will give you exponentially more fight than a, than a uh, uh, you would expect. I'm, sh I'm sticking to my clousers. I'm basically throwing a big, this one is a saltwater hook called a, a Timco 600 SP hook. It has a marvelous penetration so it'll, it'll go all the way through these fish and hold them. The other hook I like even better though right now is a circle hook and that circle hook allows that fly to kind of dangle and, and tumble down and when that fly tumbles down sometimes you'll just pick up the slack you got a little bit of slack you pick up the slack on it and there's a fish it's hooked himself because they close their mouth and when that circle hook comes back out it stops right at the lip you got the fish they're not getting off the circle hooks are a lot cheaper and they're a lot uh, easier to uh, deal with in a lot of ways and more sizes and and just the, the, the cost savings is enormous but that's the fly it's a red over white clouser with a heavy eye. Connected to that is either an 8 or a 10 pound tip um, fluorocarbon leader. And remember the heavier the line, the heavier the tip, the, the higher that fly runs in the column. It's not about the weight of the line, it's about the resistance that the, the larger diameter provides. So that means that larger diameter tips run, run shallower than, than thinner diameter tip so eight is what I like ten is what I use if I'm having trouble getting snagged and, and the fish are getting a little bit rowdy remember as you do this you're gonna catch dozens of fish on the, on the fly I, you know when I tie these this is this is not synthetic but a lot of times I'll tie these out of synthetic material so they'll last longer that's number one number two is you really coat those heads really well and then uh, the other thing you want to do is very important is retying that fly on from time to time so that you can uh, make sure there's no frays because these fish when they turn and fight their their uh, fins will will fray the line further up like six or eight inches up you'll feel it start to rough up but uh, it's a this is an eight weight using a uh, one of my newer reels this is the uh, hatch seven and it's very expensive for this kind of purpose but but it certainly does the job when it comes to uh, it's got the larger larger arbor and everything so that I can get get my slack in I go to reel every time and also um, such a reliable drag you just you just can't beat it I mean it's just it's just spectacular um, so that's that's a, basically the equipment you need um, the location that I'm doing well is Lake Ray Roberts the dam there there are other locations other lakes with dams open right now some have more or less access. They're all very crowded right now with people. Like, uh, I started fishing the Ray Roberts Dam 10 years ago and there was nobody there for these kind of things. And now there's, there's, it's elbow to elbow sometimes. And sometimes I'll just get there and have to wait for 30 minutes or an hour before I find, the, you know, can go to the spot I want to be at. Um, let me see what else I've got. And all this will be in writing on the website, Texas Flycaster. Um, Another thing you want to remember 
is the equipment you wear, not just the stuff you take, but what you wear. Yesterday when I was casting, it was a blush, it got to be a blustery day like this. I casted this line, this fly, this rod, and the wind caught it and threw the line back around my back and it wrapped that clouser around my head and that clouser came around and hit me in the mouth, right in the teeth with a heavy weighted clouser. And I didn't lose a tooth, which is kind of a miracle since you know my past includes cancer and the radiation treatment all over here. So I'm very happy that my tooth held up. But if I hadn't been wearing glasses, my luck would be that it would come around and catch me in the eye. So, you know, that's one of those things. Glad to have these, even though it missed. If it had been just a little bit higher on the wrap, I would have been in some trouble. Because that, <laughs> my eye is a lot softer than my tooth. So that's one thing. As you work your way down, you want to wear, you know, something that sheds water and a couple of layers probably for your shirts, pants, whatever. You're going to get wet probably. Skipping, skipping all down to, to the very bottom. These are the Sims, some guide boots I have that I, I went ahead and put the studs in. If you're on the riprap and rocks like I am to do this kind of fishing or anywhere that you might slip, putting these studs in is the way to go and it really gives you kind of a four-wheel drive kind of traction to the whole thing because uh, you really want to have confidence to stand and move on these rocks and actually run up and down the rocks if you have to just to uh, to get an advantage on these fish so those are the things that I think technically I also carry a staff just so I can balance on these have a third basically a third leg on these rocks as I move around which is really nice so carry a wading stick as well and you'll be very happy about that okay let's go back to the notes that pretty much covers it for, for the local fishing and fly fishing. Um, keep an eye on those, on those flows. Make sure you subscribe to the new supplemental channel for subscribers only. Those of you that were subscribed to the written word at texasflycaster.com are automatically grandfathered in on this new um, offering I have with the videos just for you. And uh, that's about it. I think you need to go to the end, watch to the end, watch the scroll, and see what's going on on saltwater, which saltwater uh, has been a little bit off and on. It got so cold that we had fish kills on the coast. Since I've been, since I've last broadcast, there were some plenty of baby tarpon found on the Texas uh, coast and inland um, canal ways. Uh, anywhere from this, this size right here and tarpon, like buckets of them. So they're there uh, where they were. Uh, but the fish kill was not too broad or too, didn't go on, the freezing temperatures did not go on long enough to create huge losses like we had back in the 1980s. Okie doke, you guys got the information. Make sure you check out the website. Thanks for watching, have a great weekend, and all things being equal, if we can get some good weather next week. We only had one day that I could do it this week, and that was yesterday, and I went out and did it, because you, you see, You'll either see some video before, saw some before this or after this. I haven't even edited it yet, so I don't know where it's going to be. But feel free to contact me. My email is texasflycaster at gmail.com. My phone number 940-380-0408. It is not too soon to start thinking about booking a fly fishing trip with me. I guide for carp on Lake Ray Roberts on a technical polling skiff. And i uh, love to have you out. It's uh, something for an intermediate to advanced type fly fisher, but I definitely take beginners and we'll start from scratch and figure it out. It's going to be, it looks like it's going to be a great year for that. So I wouldn't hesitate to schedule something soon. I do have one other thing. In the future, um, this year I've started working on two books. One book is for kids who want to learn to fly fish. And, and we're talking an age group probably from eight to 14 or 15. So that book is being written right now, a yeah, chapter at a time, very slow. I should have it done by the end of the year. And the other one is a much more ambitious project on the Devil's River. So we're going to see what we can get going with that. If we can finally com just condense all the information into one good um, book about the Devil's River here in Texas. And if you guys know anything about Devil's River, then um, I'd be glad to hear about it. You, if you fish there, I'd like to know more about it. Um, I'm starting from zero on the Devil's River. 
So thanks for watching. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time here at Texas Flycaster YouTube channel and always online at www.texasflycaster.com.